This video is a quick introduction to the API and application integration capabilities within Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services. When you log in to Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services, you see the My Services page. The My Services page shows the services that you can use. The services you see on this page are based on your organization's licenses and your user permissions. Use this page to switch between services. If you click Show All Services, you will see all the Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services. Some services have free trial versions that you can try out. Hover over the lower right corner to find descriptions of the services. You can set the service you use most frequently as the default service. Then when you log in to Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services in the future, You'll skip the My Services page and go directly to the default services homepage. Now let's open the application integration service. This service provides design time support for real-time data integration, API creation and business process automation. The name of the service you have open shows in the header. If you want to switch to a different service, just click the service name to return to the My Services page. The navigation bar always appears in the Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services window, regardless of which page you are viewing. When you first open application integration, the Explore page comes up. All your projects, folders and assets are displayed here. Click New on the navigation bar to create an asset. You can create a process, guide, service connector, connection and a process object. Create a process to orchestrate and define control flow logic for business processes that span cloud and on-premise applications. Here is our process designer. When you create a new process, the start and end steps are added by default. You need to fill in the business logic between the start and end steps by dragging and dropping steps onto the canvas. You can name the process as per your choice. Click the Start tab and select the runtime environment as the cloud server or a local secure agent. Click the Input Fields tab to create an input for the process. Use the Output Fields tab to create an output for the process. You can also define temporary fields for the process. Use the Start tab to define the security details for the process. You can either define the allowed users and allowed groups who can run this process or allow anonymous access. Let's drag the assignment step between the start and end steps. For each step, you can configure properties in the bottom pane. Let's assign the output field to the input field value. After you create a process, you can validate and save the process. Let's now publish this process. After a process is published, Service URLs are generated using which we can invoke the process. For example, let's copy this URL and use a browser to invoke the Hello World process that we just created. Pass the input parameter and hit Enter. Here is our process output. We just saw how a process that encapsulates business logic can be invoked as an API. You can also configure a process to get invoked when a specified event occurs. You can do this by using these fields available on the Start tab of the Start step. Let's look at Guides now. A guide is a set of screens or steps that prompts users to review, enter or confirm data. Guides can run on browsers, on computers or on mobile devices. Create a guide in the same way you create a process by dragging and dropping steps onto the canvas and configuring step properties in the bottom pane. After you create a guide, validate, save and publish the guide. 
When you publish a guide, an embed code is generated. Using this embed code, you can invoke the guide. You can also run and simulate a guide. You can create a service connector to connect to third-party services by using REST or SOAP APIs. What's great is that you can also create a service connector to any service that exposes a REST or SOAP API. Define the connection properties that you want to use for the service connector. You can define one or more actions that you want to associate with the service connector. Optionally, you can define process objects for the service connector. If you have a Vistil or a Swagger JSON definition of a service, creating a service connector is even easier. Just import the Vistil file or the Swagger file to create a service connector. You can also import service connectors from a registry of service connectors maintained on the cloud application integration community. Access the Informatica network page and open the cloud application integration community. Click the How to Service Connectors category. Click this blog post to know more about service connectors that you can import. Validate and save the service connector and then publish it. After you create a service connector, you must create a connection to use the service connector in a process. Select the type of connection that you want to create. Define the associated connection properties. You can create connections using built-in connectors such as the file connector and the JDBC connector. You can also create connections using service connectors. Validate, save and publish the connection. After you publish a connection, the connection metadata gets populated in the metadata tab. Create a process object to group and structure data. Add fields to create a process object. For example, instead of having separate fields for each kind of demographic data, you could have one process object called demographic data that contains fields for the name, address and phone number fields. You can then save and use the process object in a process. So far, we looked at how we can create different types of application integration assets. After you create and invoke your application integration assets, you can view the runtime details of your assets in the application integration console. Let's open the application integration console. You can use the tabs on the navigation bar to monitor your application integration assets. For example, click the Processes tab to monitor processes. Select the runtime environment for which you want to monitor processes. You see all the processes that were run. Here is the Hello World process that we ran some time back. Click a process ID to access the process view detail page. This page has a chronological list of process activities. You can also see an advanced view of the process execution from this page. Click a process name to access the process version listing page. Click a process version number to access the deploy process version detail page. Use the process schedules tab to create a schedule and associate it with the process. The logs page lists all server and deployment logs. Click an instance to view details. Use the server configuration page to configure cloud server or process server properties. For the cloud server, you can view tenant details and create some system services. For the process server, you can view and configure much more. You can configure monitors, queues, storage, and some system services. On the Deployed Assets page, you can view and manage contributions, deployed processes, resources, indexed properties, 
and URL mappings. As the name suggests, the process server health page applies only to the process server. You can view the process server performance, alerts and statistics here. The process metrics page shows alarm queue and receive queue metrics. You do not see any queues here because they have not been configured. You can use the server configuration page to create an alarm queue and receive queue. Now let's look at what the API manager service can do. Use API manager to manage the APIs of services and processes that you built using the application integration service. The API registry page shows a list of available APIs. What you're seeing here is a list of published processes. You also see that every available service is exposed as a REST or SOAP service. Available services are services that are not managed. Managed APIs are services that have been converted into managed APIs. Let's convert the available API for the Hello World service into a managed API. Click Actions and then click Create Managed API. The Hello World service now appears under Managed Services. Once the API is managed, it has a unique endpoint that can be used for invocation. You can also apply different policies on managed APIs and perform analytics on them. To configure policies for this API, click Actions and then click View Details. You can set a rate limit policy for this API. For example, if you set the policy to allow 5 requests in every 60 seconds, this API can only be invoked 5 times in a minute by any user. If a user tries to invoke the API for a 6th time, an error will be displayed. Use the Policies page to set organization-wide API policies. You can set rate limit policies as well as IP filtering policies. The analytics page shows you how many times managed APIs have been invoked and on what date. It also shows the top APIs and top users. You can also assign an API to a group. Click Actions and then click Add to Group. Select an existing group name or create a new group. To get the managed API URL, open the API portal service. Click Actions and then click Copy URL. API Portal provides API consumers with secure access to managed APIs. API consumers can view details of a managed API such as status and authentication type. You can also drill down to view further details of the associated Swagger file or Whistle file. To summarize, this video gave a quick introduction to the API and application integration capabilities within Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services. We also gave an overview of the following services that help provide solutions for your use case. Application Integration, Application Integration Console, API Manager and API Portal.